in number one, it says 50 students were asked two survey questions. First question, do you have a dog? Second question, do you have a cat? And then their responses were summarized in this Venn diagram. So based on this Venn diagram, how many students answered that they have a cat? So remember when you're reading a Venn diagram, everything that is within um, the cat circle, all of those numbers, that's how many have a cat. So any numbers inside of this blue circle have a cat. And so we can see that that is 13 total people have a cat. And then how many students have a cat or a dog? So cat or dog means that it would be in either of these two circles here. Okay, the blue one being all the people that have cats, the red one being all the people that have dogs. So in either of these, so just add up all of these numbers. So eight plus five is 13 plus 14 um, is 27. How many students have a cat and a dog? So cat and a dog would just be that are in both bubbles. So that's gonna be five. People that have both a cat and a dog. How many students do not have a cat? So do not have a cat cannot be in this blue circle. So anybody in this blue circle has a cat, everybody else does not. So we see that we've got 14 people that just have a dog and 23 people that have neither. So that would be 37 total people that do not have a cat. You could also have thought about that as taking all the people who have a cat and subtracting that from the total number of people surveyed. So we had 50 people surveyed, um, 13 of them had a cat, so that also would have given you 37 that did not have a cat. How many students do not have a cat or a dog? So that would be the number outside of our Venn diagram circles. So 23 total students did not have either a cat or a dog. Number two in the, in the Venn diagram, the circle on the left represents all of the whole numbers between 1 and 12 that are multiples of 2. And the circle on the right represents all of the numbers between 1 and 12 that are multiples of 3. So in this case, it says which, um, so which numbers are multiples of 2. So if we looked at all of these numbers, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12, and we were going to place these. So which ones are multiples of 2? So we would have the numbers 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, and 12. Those are going to be um, in this multiples of 2 circle. And then which ones are multiples of 3? So I'm going to make this one red. I'm just not putting them in yet because I want to organize my data first. So which ones are multiples of 3? So 3, 6, 9, and 12. Um, and so I'll just write those out here. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, and 12. And then multiples of 3 would be 3, 6, 9, and 12. So which numbers belong in the region where the two circles overlap? So the, the numbers that are in both of these columns. So the ones that I circled twice, circled both times in the list here or wrote down both times. So the 6 and the 12 belong in the middle. So 6 is both a multiple of 2 and 3, and so is 12. Which whole numbers between 1 and 12 are not contained in either of the circles? So which ones did I not write down here or in my list here, which ones did I not circle? So that would be 1, 5, 7, and 11. Those were not, um, those are not multiples of 2 or of 3. And then what is the probability that a whole number between 1 and 12 selected at random is a multiple of 2 or 3? So how many numbers did we have that were multiples of 2 or 3? So we had 4 that were not, 
Okay, so four that are not multiples of two or three. So this means that eight are multiples of two or three out of 12. And so if you um, simplify that, both of those are divisible by four. So that's two thirds um, or the decimal of that would be about 0.67. And then what's the probability um, that a whole number between 1 and 12 selected at random is not a multiple of 2? So if we look at how many multiples of 2 there are, okay, so we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 that are multiples of 2 out of 12. So 12 minus 6 means there are 6 that are not multiples of 2. So 6 out of 12, which simplifies to 1 half. Um, or 0.5. Number three, two classes of elementary students are going on a field trip. They will be provided with a snack. Each student selects one snack option. The table summarizes the snack preference for each student in the class. Um, so what is the probability that a student selected at random prefers peach slices as a snack? Okay, so here we have 26 students that prefer peach slices, and we got to figure out how many students there are total um, in these classes. So if we just add up the number that prefer apples, that's 11. The number that prefer carrots, that's 9. 11 plus 9 is 20, plus 26 is 46 total students. So 26 out of 46 um, prefer peach slices. So then we could do 26 divided by 46 to get our probability. Um, you could leave it as a fraction too if you wanted, um, but the decimal of this would be 0.565, so about 0.57 or 57% prefer peach slices. What is the probability that a student selected at random prefers an apple or carrot sticks? Okay, so apple or carrot sticks. So if they prefer either, they fit in this. So here's the people that prefer apples and the people that prefer carrot sticks. So that totals 20 out of 46 people. So 20 divided by 46 is going to be um, a decimal of 0.4. 3-4, or about 43%. What is the probability that a student in class A selected at random prefers an apple snack? So now we are just looking at um, class A. So now we're ignoring class B. So just in class A, what is the probability that somebody prefers an apple snack in class A. So now this is four people out of the total in class A of students is four plus six is 10 plus 12 is 22 students in this class. So four out of those 22 prefer apple sticks and four divided by 22 um, is 0.181 or 18%. Okay, then part D said, what is the probability that a student selected at random is in class B and prefers carrot sticks? So now we're looking at the total again, okay? And we're looking at out of, out of all of these people, what's the probability that they are both in class B and they prefer carrot sticks? So how many people are in class B and prefer carrot sticks is three, okay? And that's going to be 3 out of the total of 46. So 3 divided by 46 gives us a chance of 0.065 or about a 7% chance of choosing somebody that meets both those qualifications. Number four, the table shows the results from a survey that asked 200 adults if they had a college diploma and if their annual income was more than $40,000. So we asked 200 people total. So a person who took the survey is selected at random. What is the probability that that person has a college diploma and, okay, so let's look at college diploma and makes $40,000 or less. 
An and means it needs to meet both those criteria. So we end up with 44 people out of 200 that have both a college diploma and make less than $40,000. And so divide that, 44 divided by 200 gives you 0 0.22. Then for part B, it says, what's the probability that a person doesn't have a college diploma? Okay, so doesn't have a college diploma and, so here's doesn't have a college diploma, and let me delete these other ones out of here. So doesn't have a college diploma and earns more than $40,000. So meets both of those criteria is 28, so this would be 28 out of the 200 people surveyed. Divide that and we would get um, 0.14 or 14%. Number five, the table shows data from a science fair experiment that studied the average growth rate of 20 samples of fungus at 70 degrees and 20 samples of fungus at 80 degrees what percent of the samples had above average growth? So we're just looking here at above average growth. And so we see that we have 11 out of the 40 samples. So we know there was 20 samples here and 20 samples here for a total of 40. So 11 um, out of 40 there. And this one's the percentage. So we'll do 11 divided by 40 which gives us 0.275, so that's about 28%. Then part B says, what percentage of the samples at 70 degrees? So now we are only looking at the samples at 70 degrees. So let's get that highlighted here. So looking just at the 70 degree samples, um, what percent of the 70 degrees had an average growth rate? So which of these samples had an average growth rate is 12. So 12 out of the 20 samples. So again, 12 divided by 20 gives us 0.6 multiplied by 100 gives us 60% of the 70 degree samples had average growth rate. Um, above average growth. Oh, shoot. Did that say above? Okay, I did that wrong. Um, had above average, my fault. So this one wanted above average growth rate. That's only three. So three out of 20. So three divided by 20 is 0.15 times 100 is 15%. So above average growth rate. Um, part C said, what percentage of the samples were at 80 degrees? Um, so what percentage of the samples were at 80 degrees? So this is the total of these samples. So how many samples are at 80 degrees? That's 20. Okay, out of how many? 40. So half um, or 50% of the samples were at 80 degrees. And then what percent of the samples that had an average growth rate um, were at 80 degrees? So now we are just looking at average growth rate. So we're only looking at these average growth rate samples. How many were at 80 degrees? So we had 11 samples out of the total, which is 23. And 11 out of 23 is 0 0.478 or about 48% of the samples. So 48% of the above growth, above average growth rate were at 80 degrees. All right, number six says, here's the central angle. Here's the central angle that measures one and a half radians. Select the statement that must be true. Um, so this one says that the area of the whole circle is one and a half times the area of the slice. So that would only be if this slice fit in one and a half times and this fits in more than one and a half times because this looks like it's less than a fourth. 
So this, the area of this slice would fit in there more than four times. Okay, so it's actually gonna be more than four times bigger. So that's wrong. The circumference of the whole circle is one and a half times the length of the arc. So again, this arc will fit into the whole circumference more than four times. So definitely not just one and a half times. The length of the arc defined by the angle is one and a half times longer than the length of the radius. And we know that the arc length formula is to take the radius times the radian measure. So our radius times 1.5 in this case. So we know that the arc length is one and a half times longer than the radius. So that would be the true statement. So that rules out um, D since there's only one right option.